Hello, hello. It is good to see you today. It's fun to see in the chat box where you all are in your school year. Uh, it's that kind of startup time where some people are in their rhythm already with um, in week six. Some are just barely starting out and uh, a lot of us are in between. Um, Ali mentions that they are in soft start mode and that's a great tactic for getting started. I know we were, we kind of started two weeks ago. That was our, our first week back and it became quickly apparent that our break had been too long. It was our longest summer break ever just because of the way life worked out. We we usually end early and start early. And this time we ended early and we're starting like at a normal time. So the summer break was way longer than usual for us. And um, it was evident in people's math. <laughs> so we always start with previous lessons. We never just jump right back into where we left off. And we just do the next thing in math. So you know, the start of a new school year book, the new math book never coincides with the start of the school year. So we just uh, go back a few lessons and kind of refresh knowledge at the beginning. And there was a lot of refreshment that needed to happen a few lessons back, especially for my youngest. Um, she had a real math spurt at the end of the year last year. Um, and then without review and without, you know, keeping that up, it, it was more review was needed, which is totally fine and no problem at all. It's just, that's a huge part of starting your school year is finding out where your kids are at now and what you need, because, um, definitely in the more than 12 years now or around 12 years that I've been homeschooling because my oldest just graduated this summer. And um, I have definitely seen both ends of the spectrum after a summer break. Um, you never really know where your kids are going to be at. Sometimes they go through a big growth spurt. Sometimes the break that they get over the summer is the relaxation and uh, connection opportunity that their brain needs to really make some leaps and things that you were hitting a wall with, suddenly you come back on summer break and the wall that had been there is not there anymore and they're able to move forward more than you expected. And then the opposite also sometimes happens and that's okay too because one thing that we need to remember when we are homeschooling is that we are homeschooling our own children. We are not creating a standard scope and sequence for a classroom with 20 different kids from 20 different families. And that's going to be used the next year for an entirely different set of 20 kids we are crafting a plan for our children. And the more we can do that intentionally as we homeschool, the better our homeschool is going to be. The more we can treat it as an extension of parenting education is bringing our children along in life, giving them the needed skills and knowledge that they need to enter the world. And each child needs to be evaluated and treated individually. We can do that as homeschoolers. That is one of the biggest benefits of homeschooling. And so we need to take advantage of that. We need to not worry about our children being behind or ahead. 
We just need to, to consider what the important next step is for them. They are where they are. What's the next step to move them forward? And what is their next goal line? And how can we get them there? That is what we need to consider as homeschooling parents. And any time comparisons or standards, let me put that in quotes, <laughs> standards set by people who don't really know, <laughs> that would be the government. Um, we need to ignore that. We need to evaluate our goals for our children. What do they need to accomplish? By when? Where are they now? What can we do to help them move forward? It is a big job to homeschool our kids, but it is so full of blessing and reward because we get to see them grow and be a part of that and help them do that intentionally and um, honestly without a big waste of time. <laughs> that is one of uh, the perks that my family enjoys about homeschooling is that we uh, don't do time wasters. Well, I shouldn't say that because uh, we've already had some um, incidents in our homeschool. Time was definitely wasted, but a big lesson is currently being learned about time management and obedience and um, how much break is necessary to help you come back. Well, when you take a break to come back to your work refreshed, you have to actually come back to your work. So that is why um, I asked uh, in the poll. So if you click down, if you can see where um, there's a poll you can take and um, I asked the age ranges of your kids. And mainly the one that I was interested in is the, I have an 11 year old to 13 year old now. <laughs> and if you've already had one, I see a lot of you have high schoolers here. Wow, most of you have high schoolers. So um, in the chat box, if you have been at this homeschooling gig for a number of years and you have a high schooler, please share your insights as well in the chat, answer people's questions there in the chat. And um, uh, we really value your experience. And um, yeah, in, in at Simply Convivial, it is not just like me giving a bunch of information or tasks or uh, like being some kind of guru or expert. Simply Convivial is, at this point, a group of like-minded women, who, and we are all spurring one another along to dig in and um, do our work, the work that's been given to us by God, with cheerfulness, with goodwill, with diligence, because it is good work, even when it is hard. So we aren't trying to shirk our work or excuse it away. We are trying to do our best and it is easy to get discouraged. So at Simply Convivial, we have a community of women who encourage one another, not in shallow, superficial, like yeah, you can do it because you can do anything. It's not true. We can't do anything, but we can do the work that God has given us to do cheerfully and diligently. And that's hard. So we encourage one another based on the experiences that we have had, the insights that we have gained to um, not be discouraged because our work takes effort. And because we don't see the payoff immediately, homeschooling is a long game and there will be stretches where you don't see the payoff. 
And that doesn't mean that there won't be a payoff. It doesn't mean that uh, you're doing anything wrong necessarily. Now, it might be a time to have some kind of wake up moment or change of course or whatever. But even if you are doing the right thing, the path is not going to be smooth and easy. And I know when I started homeschooling, when all of my kids were like six and under, still having babies, I was reading all the homeschool material, reading the blogs, finding the moms to talk to, because I wanted to find like, do this, and then everything will get done, and it'll be fine, it'll be easy, it'll be smooth and easy. Charlotte Mason even said, like, habits are the key to smooth and easy days. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, apparently, if you can get habits to stick, that would be true. But yeah, <laughs> our goal is not actually smooth and easy, which the thing that I had to learn as a young mom is that when I was targeting smooth and easy as the goal, I was targeting convenient for myself not requiring attention and effort from myself. Things just kind of went on autopilot and didn't require hard work from me. <laughs> like, sure, I will do hard work up front if that means I can take it easy later. And no, it's hard, good work that we have been given. So we need to rest and we need to dig in. We need to be willing to put forth the effort. And I think that when you, we need to remember that Charlotte Mason was writing at a different time before um, instant gratification and distraction and a consumer culture. And so when she said smooth and easy days, her mindset was still much more of a virtue mindset we would be chugging along pursuing virtue. Not that it wouldn't require effort, but we wouldn't be working against the grain of the universe by, you know, laziness and sl sloth and dishonesty. Um, but if we pursue and cultivate virtue, you're doing the right thing, then we will be working with the grain of the way the world actually works because God actually created the world uh, according to certain laws. And the laws include um, honesty and integrity and um, diligence all being things that um, grow fruit. They make plants or the plants of our lives, the fruit of our hands grow rather than be barren. And sometimes we think that barrenness would be easier because then we wouldn't have to work so hard, pay attention to so many details, keep so many plates spinning. And um, that is really the model that the world is pursuing and that it, it is doing its best to make it look attractive. And so we right now have to go against the grain of all the messaging all around us, but with the grain of the way that God made the world. And so it's taking extra effort on our part and it can be extra discouraging because it really is countercultural to pursue virtue. It is countercultural to homeschool. It is countercultural to throw yourself into the work of homemaking to embrace the role of wife and mother, to build a home culture that is different from what we see in the news and on the TV, 
And um, so it's going to take extra effort from us because we are swimming against the current of the culture. But we are also going with the grain of reality because God created reality. We actually live in reality. <laughs> And so the more we go with the grain of that, the more we experience the rewards, the payoffs, the fruit of um, sacrifice. We do sacrifice ourselves. We do pour ourselves out. And it is a beautiful blessing to do so. So anyway, um, I... <laughs> So yeah, that, that is not, a, uh, that was a tangent I didn't mean to go on, but I think that, you know, it's something we all need to remember, especially as we go into this next school year. Um, there are so many unknowns in the world around us. And there's a lot who not being able to predict what the future holds is like now the thing we know. <laughs> we might before have thought that we could just predict what things would be like in five years. Now we know that that's not true. Things are uncertain. Requirements are up and down and right and left. And what we need to zero in on is our calling in our homes with our kids and um, pour ourselves in there because there is great reward there. That is where God has called us to. That is where we are going to see fruit no matter what happens in the world. And we are preparing our children to go out into that world and be salt and light when they are adults when they are fully trained and we ourselves are becoming fully trained in the work that God has given us to do. God is using the work of homeschooling to train us. It is the kingdom work that he's given us to do, not because we're good enough and because um, it's, it's within our skill set that we're already well prepared for and like, here, you can do this. It'll be easy for you. It is the work that God has called us to because it is what he is going to use to sanctify us. We are educating our children and God is using that in our lives to educate us as well. So even as our children are students, we are students as well under God as our teacher. And so we can be in that mindset of learning alongside of our children and receive the benefit of even the elementary level knowledge that we are giving to them. We can also receive ourselves. But just like we have to walk alongside our children and help train their character, that's when we realize how much work our own character needs also. And that's exactly where God wants us to be. He convicts us of sin, gives us forgiveness, gives us his grace so that we can walk forward in gratitude and obedience and uh, grow in the knowledge of him and grow in sanctification, which means becoming more and more holy. Um, I use the word sanctification a lot, so maybe I should just clarify. <laughs> there is justification, and that's when God saves us, like the defining moment of salvation. God declares that we are not guilty. We are forgiven. Boom. It's the verdict. But sanctification is the gradual outworking of our salvation. Although we receive forgiveness as a, like, gravel hitting the, I don't know what the word is, 
like the judge pronounces the verdict of not guilty. It's just boom like that. Sanctification is then a process and gradual. We experience it over the entire course of our life and it's not finished until glory. Our entire life is living out our salvation, growing up into Christ, into the salvation we've been given. That's sanctification. And so it happens our whole life. We are never going to be done with it until we're done with life. So um, sometimes with homeschooling or with anything, we think that we need to reach some kind of finish line in order to qualify. Or maybe we think that we have to get our children to some kind of finish line to in, in order for anything that we did to be worth it or count or be good enough. But if we look at ourselves and recognize that we're all humans, ourselves and our children, we could see that education, sanctification is an ongoing life process. So we are preparing our children to be able to continue on their own. We're putting them on the path, giving them the tools, showing them how to do it. And then we ourselves are following that same path our whole life. That's, that's what it means to be a lifelong learner. If that's a thing, that needs to be a thing for us first. And you know, we can recognize that means that there is no finish line. So anytime we start thinking or acting as if there's some deadline or finish line that we missed, we can remind ourselves, no, there isn't. There's just the next step on the same path. Maybe there are times where we need to sprint, but um, there is one path and no finish line in this life. So um, if you have an 11 or 13 year old, somewhere an 11, 12, 13 year old, then um, yeah, I want to say, I'm sorry. I want, <laughs> I do too right now. Actually, I have an 11 year old and a 13 year old. So we're like headed into that and a little bit out of that. Um, but when everyone is little and you start homeschooling, it's exciting and joyful and maybe a little bit intimidating, but, um, Little kids are easily excitable, they're fun, they're funny, and it's easy to find those moments of joy and connection and excitement and the books are fun and we know how to um, keep them on board and um, Maybe we feed on their excitement a little bit. It really helps. And um, when it's like their problems are easier to solve. <laughs> they hit 11 or 12. It happens at different points for different kids, but it really is that prepubescent period. And um, it's a rough patch. Um, they, maybe their first response is negative. They are critical. They're argumentative. They maybe want to distance themselves a little bit from you. They're, they're starting to separate and, and realize they are their own person and they are, it, they're awkward and, um, all kinds of, all kinds of fun stuff. Homeschooling can feel like a slog if you have a middle schooler. It's a thing. And I know it's really easy to think that maybe 
you know, middle school is also a time where you're switching curriculum and activities because you're trying to like get to that next level, uh, you know, get serious because now they're past double digits. And so when the going gets tough, you might think that maybe it's the curriculum or maybe it's X, Y, Z. And um, it's important to remember that we are helping our children mature and grow up into their own and begin taking responsibility. And um, an 11 to 13 year old will try to start taking responsibility in certain ways that are not the right way to do it. And so we have to be intentional and paying attention to our particular child in that stage, guiding them along the right path and sometimes drawing lines and holding the line that they are. Well, it needs to be a wall because they're going to, um, not a line, like not a line in the sand, because they'll kick it, kick it, and try their best to destroy the line. It needs to be a wall, and they will hit their head against it. They will kick it. They will do their best to knock it down. And because they think that that's growing up, that that's being their own person, that it's being responsible to be in charge. Like they have, there's this stage where they think they have to be in charge of what they're doing in order to be independent and and grow up and so it's a good impulse a healthy impulse that they have to grow up and we as moms need to make sure to not try to hold them back and and still treat them as small children or um regret them being in the stage in any kind of way um but step it up and be that security for them in a turbulent time. It is turbulent. And it's not going to be because you shouldn't be homeschooling. In fact, I think it is a the best time to be homeschooling. I mean, besides preschool, kindergarten, I think all preschoolers and kindergartners should be at home with their mom. <laughs> That's my opinion. But I think 12 year olds really need to be as well, because sometimes they just need manual labor. Sometimes they um, they they need that personal touch that is holding them accountable. It's what they're trying for unwittingly, like as it's their stage of development and it's hard and it's not as fun as the early years. And it is such an important gift to give them. Accountability, security, um, holding that line and showing them what responsibility really looks like. It really looks like taking self-control of your responses taking a minute to take a deep breath and say, wait a second, who do you think is actually in charge here? And let's learn how, what respectful interaction looks like. I'm, we're going to work this out, not in one situation only, over the course of a, the whole year or two years. Sometimes the phase is long. Um, It can feel like our homeschool is broken, but it really is not. In fact, it's is going to be one of your most important homeschool years. Um, and this is, I am reminding myself about this as much as anyone because we're, um, we're in, we're in it. <laughs> Uh, I was like, wait a second, you know what this word means <laughs> when it says 
illustrate and you just copied a sentence like that's nice but it's not what the checklist says or um when you like you're reading red wall on the couch but i i haven't seen your checklist like where is that i don't know couldn't find it don't have to do it <laughs> that's what it boils down to right all kinds of excuses and um argumentations that we need to hunker down and work through with them and not give up on them not let them give up and um have some solid consequences in place because that is how they are going to learn responsibility and um it's a lot it's still difficult <laughs> I'll tell you, this is my third son though. I have one son that's graduated, another son that's a junior in high school, and um, 15 is coming. That's 15 is coming. <laughs> 14 can still be, um, you know, they're just going through so much. And we need to be there not letting them off the hook by helping them actually grow up into their growing, changing mind and body. It's a turbulent time, but we can be that ballast in the turbulent that's still steering a course to maturity. And um, I think it helps when we remember that a lot of times uh, the conflict that we get into is an immature attempt at trying to be mature. And so if we can keep that end goal in view and maybe see into what they might be thinking and um, give them plenty of tough love, like, nope, you are not going to play. You're not going to do this because your school's not done or you have to redo this because this is totally sloppy. This is unacceptable work. Redo it. Then the storm. Impervious. We need to be impervious as mothers. And that is being the ballast and steering the course toward maturity and having responsible sons who understand that hard work is worth it, uh, that shirking their work and excuses doesn't work. And it's not the kind of person that they want to be. And they, my older boys know that because they went through that same period and they learned, you know, learned the hard way, but it's really not that hard in the grand scheme of things. It is not the hard way having to, as it is having to learn those lessons of maturity, responsibility, accountability in your 20s. We need to help them learn the hard way when they're 12 and not when they're 20. Um, it's important and good work. Hang in there. <laughs> I'm hanging in there with you. We need to hang in there with our middle school kids. Um, and yes, give them grace, but the grace that we give is the same kind of grace that we receive. And when God gives us his grace, um, it's not taking away the trouble. It isn't saying, oh, here's a break. You, you just, here, you just never mind about that. Just, you know, take it easy. It is, the grace that God gives us is the strength and the courage and the ability to do what he has called us to do. The grace that we get is the equipping that he gives us to do what we're called to do. And so that's the same kind of grace we give our children. We are equipping them, walking alongside them, helping give them the strength and the deadlines and the consequences to encourage their growth. Um, yeah, 
Um, so a lot of imper imperviousness. Um, we do have a Scully Sisters episode uh, with Cindy Rollins, and I think it's called Homeschooling High School Boys, and she talks about it there. Um, so I would encourage you to listen to that episode. That's where I got the message from. Um, but you grow in imperviousness by practicing it. So I'll tell you, I'm a lot more impervious now than I was with my first <laughs> by practice. That's how we learn and get everything. Just like our middle schoolers schoolwork is not zap done for them. Um, they are not zapped with maturity or with a meek and quiet spirit. <laughs> and neither are we. Uh, it takes practice and God gives us the opportunities to grow. One of the things I just told one of my children yesterday was that before the mouth opened and the response is about to come out, so, oh, pause. This is an opportunity for you to practice honesty. So before you answer, think, are you going to practice honesty or deception? Which one are you going to get better at? And it's the same for us. It's the exact same. Every interaction, especially every conflict, every rising tension moment is an opportunity to practice. And God does give the grace. And so we take a deep breath. We pray real quickly right there. Lord, give me the strength. Give me the wisdom that I need because I don't have it. And he gives more grace. And as we experience that ourselves, that's our sanctification. We are better able to counsel and walk with our children as well through the experiencing it ourselves. Not that we already have all the answers, but we are able to help them because we're receiving the help we need. We're able to give them grace because we're getting God's grace. And so all of those opportunities are reminders that so you have the situation where parent, child, conflict. <laughs> parent has standard, child is bucking the requirement or excusing his sloppiness or trying to shirk the responsibility and say that it's fine. In every one of those instances, we can all take some other incident and recognize that we are the middle schooler. We are the stubborn child and God is the father. And um, they're parallel situations and parallel roles. And of course, our children are also God's children. So we are standing in this situation as their parent helping them along. But the reason that we have that responsibility is because uh, God has given that as a representative role. So we are to be a parent as he is a parent. And we can do that because we are children receiving that end as well. And not because we've attained to God likeness. <laughs> And now we are exercising our power uh, like we're Zeus or something. But instead, we are relating to that role of rebellious child who's been given grace and forgiveness and continues to be given responsibility and held to a standard. <laughs> And so that's the same thing that we do for our children. So that is why it is sanctification. And it is, we learn about ourselves as we're staring, having a stare down with our child. And that increases our humility and our wisdom right there. And um, you don't have to get it right every time. 
you have to repent, rejoice, repeat. And we are always going to be given opportunities to repent every single day. And uh, that's never more true than when you have a middle schooler. So, um, <laughs> all right, well, um, this is the kickoff workshop for the work of homeschooling, which is the course inside Simply Convivial Continuing Education that gets into the nitty gritty of working out a homeschool day. So Art of Homeschooling is the course that is about the big picture, the motivation, the vision, and like getting your hearts and minds ready to homeschool. And work of homeschooling is keeping that line, setting the line, working out the plan, uh, repenting when we fall short, when, when we fall short, and uh, keeping ourselves um, going, doing not letting ourselves off the hook, like not being the argumentative 12 year old and saying, well, I know this is the plan, but I'm only going to do half of it. <laughs> and we're just going to ignore the other half. <laughs> the work of homeschooling is for moms to be the grown up in their homeschool every day, nitty gritty, get it done. Don't be a shirking 12 year old because we all have that inside of us. And the more we can recognize that and work against it and get God's grace to help us in that, the better we're going to be able to help our children as they go through that phase. Um, some of us have those habits that were never really addressed. And so they are dressed up and grown up socially acceptable excuses, but it's really at heart the same thing. Uh, I don't want to do this today, so I'm not going to is what it boils down to. And um, the work of homeschooling is, okay, have you decided that this is what needs to happen? Then let's figure out how to make that happen and hold one another accountable to doing the important work, which is not always every single lesson, but holding on to the main point and moving that forward the main point of helping our children grow in responsibility and maturity while growing in responsibility and maturity ourselves. And when we've done that in a homeschool day, we have had a good homeschool day. So yes, we need to get a part of responsibility and maturity is following through on that checklist, but it's also having the wisdom to know what's more important than the checklist or holding kids to the line of completing that checklist before they have any free time activity whatsoever. And then being willing to uh, follow them around to enforce that, <laughs> which is uh, why I need to wrap this up and uh, go see what my children are doing. Um, so, <laughs> Work of homeschooling is going to be an amazing six weeks. The first email goes out on Friday and we are going to help one another make those important decisions, hold one another accountable with encouragement and with, um, I don't know, virtual hugs that we need sometimes because it's hard, but the encouragement also the reminder that it's important work and that um, God's working in us and through us. And that's what counts and that's what matters. So um, it's one module a week. There'll be an email every Friday with a checklist. You wanna listen to or read the lesson and then follow the, the checklist. Um, you don't need to do every single activity 
but uh, you want to listen or read the lesson and take one step in that module. The next step that makes logical sense for you, we're going to cover preparation. And that's like getting ready for the day, um, making sure all your stuff is together, uh, intention. So you have your checklist, like you know actually what schoolwork is supposed to happen in a day. Uh, attention, actually paying attention to the kids' work, which is sometimes tricky or more difficult or not done as it should be. So attention is one week. Action, and that's like teaching, doing the work. Inspection, following up on our kids' work and actually looking at it and enforcing consequences if need be, uh, but um, following through with our kids for anything we assign. And then finally, repetition. Continuing in this over and over without giving in to discouragement. We will be tempted with overwhelm, with discouragement, but we can keep going because we have God's grace. And um, he gives us rest that we can take, but he also gives us this work repetitively for our good and for our children's good. So we can rejoice even in the repetition. It's not, it's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> so I am so glad to have you here at Work of Homeschooling and this accountability that goes along with it is included in your enrollment in Simply Convivial Continuing Education. If you aren't on the active accountability path, we can, oh, Stephanie has the link there, or you can email um, the support inbox or just hit reply to any email from me. And you can ask and double check if you're on the active accountability path. If you are doing community coaching, you can do active accountability as well, because we slowed that community coaching pace down. And actually next week, both courses are working on alignment cards. So there's some overlap there where the, they work together. Um, if, But I did open this up as a public event and invited other people who are not enrolled to this workshop because we all, we all need a little encouragement and a little kick in the pants for the start of a school year. So I'm glad to have you if you are not enrolled and I hope that this was an encouragement to you. And if you would like to join us and get some accountability and focus section sessions like this for the next six weeks to help you dig in and build your consistency, build your imperviousness, build your focus as a homeschool mom in the nitty gritty day to day, then you can click the green button down below to enroll. Uh, everything's in, it's just a basic all-inclusive enrollment. And um, you will save money if you choose the quarterly plan and the quarterly plan will more than cover the time with some extra catch-up weeks for the work of homeschooling. So uh, if whether you're a member or not, if you enjoyed this session and you want to share it with anyone, feel free. So you can take the link. I don't know if the share buttons are still there. Uh, I am going to put it on YouTube. Feel free to share it. Um, and I hope that we can all dig into this homeschool year. I don't know about you, but this is the least prepared I have been for a homeschool year. But it's not my planning and feeling prepared that makes for a good school year. It is being willing to receive the grace to do what is needed, to do what we are being called to, not because we're ready and good enough, but because God has called us to it and he will equip us. And we can be faithful and fruitful, even if we haven't done all the things we would like to have done. Even if we don't feel as ready as we think we ought to be, we can still move forward in faith and trust and faithfulness 
and gratitude. So that's what we are going to do in work of homeschooling. And I'm excited to start on Friday. I already printed off my checklist for the first week and I can tell it's exactly what I need right now too. So um, yes, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you around.